as we sit in the wake of the passion of Jesus. The word that resonates with me is real. This is real Friday. This is real good Friday. It is a day of loss, a day of honesty, a day of vulnerability, leveled to the ground. Have you experienced a feeling like that? My uncle, Robert, had a lemon tree. He planted it by the porch at his coast house in South Alabama. He didn't live there full time, so he would ask people to water his lemon tree. He loved it. He was so proud of that tree. Every time we went down, he, he made sure that we would put a large five-gallon bucket that he had drilled tiny holes in at the base of the tree to drip water slowly onto the lemon tree. And it was a funny little tree. It wasn't very tall, and the leaves were really thick. And they had subtle stickers on the branches, so you could not absentmindedly reach in to grab a lemon without pulling your hand back with scratches. Last year around this time, the lemon tree had no leaves on it and no new growth. My sister confirmed our concerns later in the fall. Though beloved, that tree died. I don't know what happened, whether it was drought, heat, freeze, or disease. It was beyond recovery. And now, it is gone. Leveled to the ground. Only the love for that tree remains. Which brings us to another story of loss and disappointment, the passion of the Christ. As you heard sung so beautifully, we, we meet Jesus and his friends and when the guards of the Jewish leaders, those chief priests and Pharisees, when the guards approach, Jesus is honest and clear with them. Whom are you looking for? Jesus of Nazareth, they answer. Jesus answers honestly and clearly, I am he. And then we hear the questioning and the posturing and the badgering. And as spectators, it feels painful to be in this space. Jesus is seeking the truth. When they ask him who he is, he says, do you ask this of your own or did others tell you about me? Jesus speaks truth. You say that I am a king. For this I was born and for this I came into the world to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. Jesus' truth is clarifying, and yet he knows that the powerful opposition, both secular and religious, is threatened by him. He knows that the prophetic message of Isaiah has named the dynamic of injustice and betrayal to be expected, and Jesus knows that even this, the violence and the hate, will not extinguish God's love. That love which cures the disease, which restores sight 
to the blind transforms lives of outcasts and disenfranchised and feeds thousands. Those acts of, of aggression grounded in fear and selfishness, both in those ancient times of Jesus and today, will not and cannot quell the love and power of God. You see, the Jewish authorities and the, the guards and the crowds were missing the truth of God in Jesus' message. And it's not just, just they who miss it. We miss it, too. Author and theologian Brian McLaren writes of Good Friday, pointing to how we all misunderstand God. He says, we've assumed that God was righteous and pure in a way that makes God hate the unrighteous and impure. But Jesus has told us that God is pure love. So overflowing in goodness that God pours out compassion on the pure and impure alike. He not only has told us of God's unbounded compassion, he, Jesus, has embodied it every day as we have walked this road with him. In the way he has sat at table with everyone, in the way he has never been afraid to be called a friend of sinners, in the way he has touched untouchables and refused to condemn even the most notorious of sinners, he has embodied for us a very different vision of what God is like. In his life and ministry, Jesus reframed God's kingdom and God's love. He revealed and reaffirmed that God's love is broader, more healing, more reconciling, more forgiving more grace-filled than we can imagine or comprehend. Through miracle and parable, we still miss it. We don't, we don't miss it on purpose. We don't or cannot understand or accept the magnitude and power of the truth of Jesus. Perhaps we don't believe that the Healing truth of Jesus is really meant to wash away our sins. They're too big, or, or our inadequacies are too flawed, our imperfections too imperfect. And what would like life be like if we truly believed the power of God's love? Would we forgive or show generosity to ourselves and others? Would we lean on God for help instead of trying to do it all alone? And then what would we do as the body of Christ if we authentically and fully lived into the truth of Jesus? Perhaps even some of the current systems in our world fueled by and founded upon injustice fear, and violence would be overhauled or dismantled or even reassembled with love at the center, like the prophecy of the temple being torn down and rebuilt in three days. On this Good Friday, it is not easy, and any day it is not easy to draw near those darkest corners of sin and betrayal and fury and yet it is important to do so. Sixty years ago today, on March 29th, 1964, a group of nine men headed to church on Easter Sunday. Some men were white, some were black, some were clergy, some were lay people. Ushers barred them from entering the Easter services at Capitol Street Methodist Church in Jackson, Mississippi. The police were called and the nine were arrested, 
convicted of disturbing public worship, worship and sentenced to six months in jail with $500 fines per person. These men stood up against racial segregation in church, as did others in the South before the passing of the Civil Rights Act in June of that year. That was a corner of sin that was being faced bravely. You see, when fear and avarice are our guides, we misconstrue and contort the message of Jesus. We miss the invitation to love that love that Jesus exhibited in giving himself and forgiving those who denied him and betrayed him, abused him, misunderstood him, and killed him. That love is bigger than the injustice of Jesus' death. That love is bigger than the injustice of racism. God's love is bigger than the sins of genocide and terrorism, bigger than the ways People are dehumanized by politics, prisons, and abuse. God's love is the balm we need, for it provides the healing we hope for in resurrection. And today we must sit with the truth of Good Friday. We can't rush through to resurrection. If we do not pause to remember the sadness of the lemon tree, if we do not pause and revisit the sacrifice at Golgotha, we miss the depth of God's capacity to love. We undervalue the greatness of Yahweh. We misunderstand our role in the pain. We turn away from God's invitation to trust and rely fully upon the divine. We miss out on the grace that meets us at the foot of the cross. As we move now into a time of prayer with the solemn collects on this hard and humbling day, let us be real, let us be honest with God and ourselves on this real and good Friday. Amen.